Guys, can you see the epic monument to James Earl of Morton? Can you see it? It's amazing. It's there. <laughs> Folks, this is the monument to James Earl of Morton. Now, people ask me, Johnny, has it been worn down by time and history? Was it once maybe a grand column of decorations like... Nope, it's always really just been a sort of stone lump sticking out the ground to commemorate James Earl of Morton. This G-E-M here. Well, folks, it wasn't always at this odd angle. One day, the minister's wife, about ten years ago, drove into the graveyard here, down the path, <laughs> and accidentally reversed into it. So it's knocked it into a slight slant. Well, folks, this is the surviving section of the monument. Folks, it commemorates James Earl of Morton. Now, who was James Earl of Morton? Well, guys, he... He was the inventor of the guillotine. Now, some of you might be thinking, wait, John, guillotine is a French word, a guillotine is France, you can't that. Guillotine is French. Well, folks, the original inspiration for the guillotine is in fact Scottish. It's a device known as the Maiden, and it was invented hundreds of years before the French version. James lived during a politically turbulent time here in Scotland, when nobility were rising up against the king and being put down. And well, folks, traditionally when a nobleman was executed, especially for a crime such as treason, they weren't hanged, they had their head cut off. But these sorts of styles of executions could be messy. They often involve a sword or an axe and could take multiple hits to behead someone. So James saw this and decided what the king needed was a fast, efficient way to get rid of his noble enemies. And so he created the Maiden. This was basically an IKEA execution device. It could be quickly built, quickly disassembled, and set up wherever it was needed. Well, it had a 13-inch iron blade on a wide U-frame. And well, folks, it was a great device that was put to great use here in the city. If you want to see his invention, you can. It's in the National Museum of Scotland. how it was inspired I call this mysterious because, folks, we're not actually entirely sure who paid for or funded putting in this headstone. It's not been around for all too long, it's only been here since about the 70s. And well, guys, this headstone marks John Watchers, the captain of the Edinburgh City Guard. Now, he's a very controversial figure in Scottish history. Very controversial. Because John... Sorry. John was responsible for one of the most controversial acts here in the great city of Edinburgh. Folks, what happened was a smuggler had been arrested here in the Great City and was sent off to be hanged in the grass market, as was how it was done. But the smugglers were very popular in the city. Folks, they smuggled in alcohol and tobacco and the like without having to pay the taxes, and so gave it to them nice and cheap to the people of Edinburgh. 
This is a guy who brought cheap alcohol to the citizens of Edinburgh, and so he became very well liked and respected. <laughs> but guys, eventually, eventually he was arrested, and well, he was brought for execution. Now, folks, the smuggler was brought up in front of a large crowd, and well, the crowd grew angry. They didn't like the fact that this great man of theirs was being executed, and so they began to sort of be generally quite angry, grumbling. Some of them picked up some stones and started throwing them at the guards. Oh, the guards turned to their captain, John Porteous, and they asked him, he said, Captain, what do we do? The people are being a bit disruptive. And John, described as being red-faced and heavily drunk, ordered his men to fire into the crowd of people. <coughs> well, the guards, obviously having a bit more sense than their captain, tried to be merciful and aimed over the heads of the groups. But folks, remember what I said about executions being popular? They were so popular that people would watch out of windows executions. And so when the guards went to shoot over the heads of the crowd, they accidentally hit people watching from windows. And so some were injured and two people were killed. This led to a riot which the guards eventually put down, but John was arrested for basically his poor handling of the situation. And well, the mob of Edinburgh thought, that's it, job done, he's going to be hanged for his crimes. Until a letter arrived from the Queen, saying, oh, don't hang John, he's a good lad, leave him. It was a delay for his execution, he wasn't to be hanged for at least another year. And the people of Edinburgh didn't like this. So they launched another riot. They stormed his prison, they arrested John Porteous, and they hanged him by themselves down in the grass market, lynching him from his cell. Folks, he remains one of the most controversial figures in Edinburgh history, but clearly some people did respect him enough to finally give him a headstone here in the Greyfriars Kirkyard. Well guys, from riots and executions, we're going to move on now, round to the PM this way. We're going to chat about something a lot cheerier, Harry Potter. The <coughs> Thank <laughs> you.